You know, this Railer team is undersized. You know, Drew's 6'5", but other than that, you go right to 6'1", and you don't go up very much. It doesn't matter who you put in uh, until maybe Jermaine gets in there at some point, uh, who's the 6'8 sophomore. But, uh, you know, you're going to have to do it with uh, just pure muscle and, and technique and all the things that uh, you're taught to do to rebound when you don't have size. Second half underway, Centennial with the basketball, three on the way, back of the rim, no good. Rebound comes down to Williams, open underneath. That shot's not going to be good. There was a lot of contact. Yeah. Coach Lavin wanted a foul, probably should have been one, but the Railers come out with a rebound. Starters on the floor for the Railers, Kirby, Cannon, Hollinger, Bowers, and Bacon. Bryson down on the block, Drew. Shot fake off the glass, it'll go. Nice job by Drew. Yeah, needed that. Nice little shot fake by Bacon. Got Williams up in the air just enough for uh, Drew to get that high enough on the bank board and, and keep it away from getting blocked. So nice play out of. Oh. Oh. Nolan with a foul uh, as he came from behind on the uh, jump shooter. I thought he was clean on that one. So you wonder, well, they didn't get the last one. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know if. Uh, that referee, particular referee, was on the side of the missed call. But uh, no, it's tough to get a block shot when you come from behind on the guy. And that time, Hollinger came sprinting back to, to stop the jump shooter. One thing you you know you hope to not always do is or not try to do is, is foul a jump shot. And that's what uh, Hollinger did that time. Cam Reeves at the line for Centennial's first free throws of the night. He makes them both after Nolan Hollinger picks up his second foul. 25-19, still a close one here as we start the third. Minute gone by. You know, usually Centennial has a couple guys that are just superior athletes and not great basketball players. Uh, the shots don't look very good or, or don't don't go in all the time, but they've got some nice uh, nice shooters on this year's team. Bryson in the corner for ah, three is good. Needed that one. And we, last year, how many times did Bryson hit that one three just when we needed it? You know, and that, that's a big steal for Titus. Steal, Titus, go ahead. Yeah. Good. You know, he gets his hands already on a lot of balls Cannon has. And uh, although he's got the quickness, he's got the good and eye coordination, and he tipped that one to himself. Got it that time. Titus did a lot better job of finding the bank board on, uh, on after the steal. But you're right, Kirby hit some big threes last year, and normally not out of the corner. You know, he's usually a guy that's uh, – top of the key to that wing area. That time he was deep in the corner over by the student section and uh, got the big one to go. Then of course Cannon with the big steal and a layup. So nice start to the half for the Railers up 30-19 with 6.29 left. Timeout taken by Centennial to try and uh, stop this. Largest lead of the night for the Railers at 11. Also gives us an opportunity to thank our friends at Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital, Stacy's Family Pharmacy, and Bright Idea Screen Printing for sponsoring the broadcast on 96.3 FM and WLCNOnline.com. You can listen. And, of course, uh, Scott Kirby manning the camera. You can catch this game later this week. Watch the Railers open the season here against Centennial. And right now things are uh, looking good. It's an 11-point lead. It's still a long way to go, just a minute and a half into the third quarter. Reeves, Reeves in the lane. Back out to him. been a three. No good. Fight for the rebound. Let Check go. down. Nice hurdle job by Reeves as he hurdled his team Mary. and landed on the second row. The guys on the bench didn't even didn't even balk or didn't even phase him. I mean, it's like this. They knew he was going to jump over and not get hit in the head. If I'd have done that, I'd have got stuck in midair. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Stolen away from Titus. Reeves will go in this time for the easy two. Yeah, Titus got caught in the corner with some. Reeves. With some pressure, and that's, uh, of course, that's not the area you want to get to uh, get caught in. 30-21, 5.50 to go in the third, along with Josh Comic, Jeff Benjamin with you. Isaiah tried to go in for a scoop shot, got it blocked, got his own rebound. Bacon under there strong, and he's going to go to the line shooting two. Nice job by the Railers. A couple offensive rebounds, the two big guys going after it. Isaiah might have been a little out of control on that first layup. Strong going up second time, but Drew again crashed, and that's exactly what we need out of Drew Bacon. That yeah, right there. You're right, going after the offensive rebound, being aggressive under the basket. And I thought Isaiah was a little timid going in on the big guy that time and tried to try to kind of quick shoot it instead of just powering up. Or I thought he got him up in the ear on one of the one of the fakes and didn't go into him, but 
Uh, good thing Drew was there to pick up the uh, pick up the rebound. He misses the first free throw, but hopefully Bacon can knock this one down. Missed on the first one, second one is good. So 31-21. Railers lead is at 10. Drew got the steal, nice job by Bacon. Yeah, just lackadaisical passing by, by the Chargers. Isaiah down underneath, Drew in the lane and he's tripped up, oh, they're gonna say it's travel. Looked like Isaiah trying to uh, reward Drew for his uh, hard work on the defense, but uh, Drew trips, called for traveling, so a turnover gives it back to Centennial. 31-21, Chargers down by 10 here to the Railers. Cowper goes around the screen, trying to get away from Cannon. Hemsman uh, three, left it short. Fight for the rebound, and a push is going to be whistled on the Railers on the rebound. I think they got Bowers. Foul on Isaiah, his first, second on the team. You know, we talked about that. We've got five minutes to go in the third. Isaiah just now picking up his first foul. Right, which is, uh, you want Isaiah to be aggressive, but yet you'd like him to have plenty of fouls left in the fourth or in the second half in case he does pick up a silly couple. So uh, good job by Isaiah of, of not picking up the, the uh, cheap fouls and, and being aggressive. Nice move inside by Williams, who turned away from the defense, took it down the lane, laid it up and in. It's now 31-23. Railer lead is down to eight. Cannon finds an open bacon underneath. Drew goes up, and he's fouled. Fouled by Williams, and for Williams, that's now his third. Bacon back to the line, shooting two. Well, they've got him for four. We'll take that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Drew, first one on the way. That's up and good. For the Chargers, 23, James Williams. Bacon with seven. Yes. Railers looking to move it back to ten again. Sheen back in. He's got uh, six points, both uh, all on three. So the Railers got to be aware of him. Of course, and Hemsvena. It's over. Bacon missed the second, so the Railer lead hangs at 9, 32-23. Well, it really took out Williams, who was one of their threats at the, at the free throw line. Not a lot of scoring, but he did a good job of passing around. And, and we saw early on in the game, Roberts Thomas didn't even, didn't even want to look at the basket. He was, he was in there to pass the ball and, uh, and looked uh, a little timid on opening night here in the 2016-17 season. So the extra foul that uh, Williams got it hopefully helps out for the Railers. Grunder back in as the ball is tipped out of bounds. And then they're going to get a force out on Grunder. So Ben will pick up his second, third on the team. Grunder came in replacing Drew Bacon. Railer basketball this year brought to you by St. Clara's Manor and all the nice folks at the Lincoln Park District. 4.01 to go in the third. Lincoln with a 32-23 lead. Nice job by uh, Cannon and Kirby with the trap at the timeline. Centennial takes a timeout. It's just a 30. So we will keep it here. Say thanks to uh, Rickham State Farm Insurance and Fifth Street Food Mart for their sponsorship of Railer Basketball. And uh, you, you know, Scott, who he hasn't thanked is our Cubs for bringing us this championship. Really. I've been waiting for one, and we've, been, we've gone almost a full game on the first night of the hey. season, and we've yet to thank the Cubs. Hey, like I said, this is a history-making night because this is the first time uh, yeah, yeah, a yeah, Railer yeah. game has been played with the Cubs as the defending world champion ever. So we'll take it. Yes, we will. The first of 20 in a row. That'd be all right. <laughs> I'm glad we just got the one. 
So after the timeout, Railers watch as it's a nice play up and in by Tommy Makabu. Yeah, that was too easy. That was one pass to the middle and a cut opposite side, and that was a layup, and especially right out of a timeout. I don't know if Coach Lavin drew it up, but it worked to perfection. But uh, against the Railer defense, that was way too easy. Bryson, yeah, top of the deep. key, three is wow. good. That's Jason Osborne range there. Just when you don't think it's, uh, you think it's too far to shoot it, they don't guard you. And uh, all of a sudden it goes through the bottom of the net. Sheen has it rejected away by Bryson, so he hits a three on one end and prevents a three on the other end. Railer's up 35-25, and he's, he can make six more threes tonight. And at home, Scott, that block is what he's going to be talking about. Yeah, and Scott's <laughs> got to tell him he should have kept it in bounds, though. <laughs> Railers with a 10-point advantage. There it is, go. That's all the way, and yeah. then a foul coming over the back on Roberts Thomas as Isaiah was there for the steal. And it's right now, Josh, it's in that it's in that point where a couple more possessions and the Railers could really stretch this out. Yeah, 10 points, 317 left in the third. Sloan comes in for Cannon and, and see if the, see if Sloan can keep up that intensity on the point guard as, uh, as Cannon did. We're getting a lot of deflections, a couple steals. Sloan on the left side to Grunder. Grunder watched by Sheen. On the right wing now to Hullinger. Grunder over to Bryson. Down in the corner to Sloan. Now Sloan can really shoot it too. Junior wears the number 12. Isaiah long three. That's off. Rebound comes down to Roberts Thomas. Yeah, that's not uh, probably not the shot Coach Al was looking. If he was on the line, I think it's probably a a good shot, but uh, that was definitely, definitely deep. Another tip away and steal by the Railers into the hands of Bryson Kirby. Sloan looks ahead to a wide open. Hollinger for three, left it short. Yeah, where Hollinger had the whole lane to go to the basket. And then a foul whistled on the far side against Lincoln. That's going to go against Nolan. That'll be his third, fourth on the team. And you always hear it talk about it that sometimes you can be just too open. Yeah. Bowers is third. Second. Two fifteen to go. Inside out passing. Three on the right side is no good. No good job, nice job boxing out. And he got stepped on the right in the middle of his chest. Yeah. Good job of battling underneath on that. Backside rebound. Isaiah drives in. Nolan's going to try and answer. And yeah. he does. Good three. job by Hellinger. Gets, her, gets the big rebound on one end and then steps up in the same corner. He just missed one on the previous possession right in front of the water cooler over on the uh, side by the Railers bench. This time he steps up and drills it. Another tip away by Bryson. I don't know Bryson's gotten a lot of tip aways tonight. Grunder at the free throw line. Drives the lane. Lobs it back out to Isaiah. Isaiah. Now act two, Hollinger, minute and a half to go in the third, Lincoln up 38-25. Yeah, I talked to Coach a little bit, uh, of course, before the season started and said Bryson had grown a little bit over the summer, now up to 6-1. Not sure what he was last year, probably 5'10", five, 5'11", five, five, so that couple inches, arms grow a little bit longer, and now he's got, uh, you know, a couple more tips on the basketball, lead to a couple steals for the Railers tonight. Sloan, back door. Nice cut by Isaiah. Isaiah off the glass. Count it. He is fouled. No, no foul. No, no foul. But he made it. We'll That's a good it. thing. And Isaiah, I think Coach said, we're not going to run any more any back doors for you if you don't shoot the layup after he, he didn't attempt that one in the first half or first quarter. The next couple we've ran to him, he's now uh, gone up and in. So lots of contact after that one. No call, but the Railers now up 40-25. We're under a minute. Hemsma slips it over to Sheen, Good foul. and Nolan with a hard foul, and he'll go up, uh, him, uh, Sheen will go to the line shooting two, and if I got it right, Nolan has four. Yeah, that, uh, that's a good yep. foul though, Nolan. Uh, they've got three flashing three. on the board, and you're rarely wrong, but... Uh, it's opening night. Right, yeah, yeah, you forgive. The Cubs win. Uh, so yeah, no, but that a good foul by Hollinger, not giving him the easy basket. That was an easy two points, and he made sure that uh, Sheen did not get it anywhere close to the basket because the two arms were wrapped up and brought down as Sheen drops down the first free throw. So 
Nice third quarter there for the Railers. See if they can hold it off here and uh, get the last shot there. 43.7 seconds, Sheen up and good on the second one. 40-27. Pressure started to turn up a little bit here for the Chargers. Railers will get the basketball to start the fourth quarter. Kirby yeah. out to Bowers. Good, that's a senior probably, you know, maybe a sophomore or junior shoots that in the corner. Or the shot that Kirby just had a chance at, but the senior knows. Been around the gym a long time. 30 seconds left. Coach wants that last second shot. 20 seconds to go. Railer basketball. Part of the sponsorship provided to you by Jim Examus Ford Lincoln. Our sponsor for our tip-off. We're down to 10. Railers up 13 here in the third. Yep, let's get a big basket here, Jeff. Titus. Better Isaiah. hurry. Isaiah. Isaiah with the dribbles. Defender falls down off the glass. Nice. Count it. He is foul. And that buzzer goes down. Isaiah. 40, That's the easiest shot he'll have all night. 42-27 <laughs> as Bowers scores at the buzzer. And the Railers will take a 15-point lead into the fourth. Lincoln 42, Centennial 27. Back in a minute. You're listening to Lincoln Railer basketball. 19-10. Yeah. Stretch it out a little bit. Nice nice uh, quarter, nice quarter for Bowers. Uh, really got to the basket a little more than, than he had. Ooh, almost had bacon there on the back floor. But yeah, a couple times where Bowers got to the basket, easy shots, and uh, you know, we've we've wanted that out of Railer team for a long time. When you get to put put games away, you gotta get those easy ones. Uh, Bowers was able to get, I know, six points off of uh, somewhat easy shots, a couple layups, and a nice bank shot from about five. So. Bacon goes to the basket hard, going back to the free throw line. So, you know, if you can get this out of Bacon, he's at probably six free throws at right now, I think, six or eight. Um, Bowers with a couple free throws. It just puts so much pressure. They get, you know, the other team has to worry about foul trouble, and our opponents have rarely had to worry about foul trouble in the past because we just, you know, just didn't go to the basket strong and, and weren't physically tough enough to, to draw fouls. And I hope that's going to be a part of the Railers uh, or the theme that tonight is Bacon and Bowers to keep getting to the keep getting to the hole, which allow them to uh, keep getting to uh, to the free throw line. Drew made both free throws to make it 44-27, and then uh, we've got Drew in there trying to take a charge, but Bacon will be whistled for the foul. Seven twenty-six to go. Railers up by seventeen. Two free throws coming for Centennial. It'll be Bryson Cowper his first two attempts at the line. First one on the way is up and good. Reminder: Railer basketball this year brought to you by Family Custom Cleaners, Laundry, Tanning, and U-Haul, as well as Citizens to elect Kevin Bateman for Lincoln Mayor. Both are good by Cowper. 44-29. Railers still at that 15-point lead. Titus Cannon all the way down to the baseline underneath the Bacon. Bacon kicks it back out to Grunder. Titus holds against Hemsmaner. Right side to Bacon, back on top to Bowers. Seven minutes left in the fourth quarter on opening night. Lincoln up 44-29. Yeah, you love to see the Railers just handle it here, handle the pressure, get to the basket. And Titus is going to be whistled four steps. Almost got caught in a double team and uh, spun away a little bit. And Titus gets whistled for the turnover. And again, the pressure starts to pick up a little bit for Centennial and the Railers continuously hold it out top. And, you know, they're going to keep... They're going to keep coming at you. The Railers have got to uh, keep going. Keep being aggressive. Keep getting to the basket. Centennial returns a favor with the turnover as they throw it away. We've seen a lot of times the Railers shut that offense down way too early, Jeff, and Centennial's not ready to go home quite yet. Isaiah into the front court to Kirby. Double team comes, gets it over to Titus, and a... I think they. Uh, I think Greg that, called a timeout there. <laughs> Greg did. I'm not sure Coach Al did, and Brandon Farmer's in between both, and he's the only one that knows. And he's the only one laughing. So. 
So back in action, six and a half to go. Bacon strong, high yeah. off the glass, count it, and he is fouled. And that's the play, Josh, where, no, where they say he stepped out of line? Oh, stepped on the end line. So do not count the basket from Bacon. We're not going to start that again this year, are we? No, we did a lot of that last year. One or two times a night, stepping on the sideline, stepping on the baseline. Three from Cowper on the way. Doesn't Good. get the roll. Isaiah the rebound. Yeah, nice box out by the Railers, too. It was about a three or four foot circle there. There were no white shirts standing there, and a lot of the Railers boxed out, had guys on their backside, and the Bowers cleans it up. Six minutes to go. Railers still up by 15. On the right side to Bacon. Now to Kirby. Kirby hands to Grunder. We've seen this uh, offense for a long time, Josh, and uh, if run right, it can run minutes yeah. off the clock. Yeah, if you can uh, short, right. short, way short. Bryson's 3 no good. Isaiah tried to tip it in. It's going to be out of bounds back to Centennial. And that may have also been as much of tired legs. Yeah, it well, first game, you know, Bryson's logged a lot of minutes already tonight, and uh, I, I think after you get that first one under your belt, you know, you're, you're a lot better. I remember the first game, he always always had cotton mouth, and it seemed like the first two minutes of the game, and man, I worked my tail off for, for two weeks at least to uh, condition myself and get myself ready, but it didn't matter how good a condition you were in, those first couple minutes were just dog tired. I always had to get a break out, and then once I came back, I seen Seemed like I was all right. Foul's going to be whistled on the near side against the Railers, trying to keep Reeves from getting to the basket. Foul goes on Drew Bacon. That's the seventh team foul, so we should be shooting one in bonus. Railer basketball this year brought to you by Shelter Insurance agent Corey Leonard as well as Gary's drywall finishing, painting, and power washing. 5.26 to go. Been stuck at a 15-point lead for the Railers for quite a while, and we won't change it as the free throw is missed by yeah, Reeves. Let's get a score here, huh? We've kind of shut the offense down as we talked about. Uh, and these guys keep coming after it. Isaiah tried to go behind the back. It was tipped away, and Titus... And uh, Cowper were there for the held ball. Alternating possession will give it back to Centennial. Nolan Hollinger checking back in for Drew Bacon. Bacon with a solid night with nine points so far. Yeah, yeah, a couple rebounds for Drew, a couple offensive rebounds. Still those plays there you, where you like him to, to really power up and, and, and go after it, and uh, yet uh, not able to do that. Inbound, they try to get it to Williams, and he's fouled by Grunder. So Williams at the line shooting one in bonus. Five thirteen to go. Williams, the six five senior for Coach Lavin. Just two points here tonight. First free throw up and good. You said, Josh, a good turnout here on opening night from uh, fans and students alike. Yeah, and uh, you know, that you, you kind of sit back and think that this thing's over, but Jeff, but there's five minutes and 10 seconds left and we're only, only up 13. And uh, we've been on a scoring drought here for a while and, and Centennial is starting to Ratchet up that pressure a little bit. Grunder out to Kirby. Hollinger on the wing, now to Isaiah. The timeline. Railers up by 13, 44-31. see Isaiah just turn and go to the basket. Isaiah in the lane, kicks back out to Nolan. Hollinger on the far side to Kirby, now back out to Grunder. Grunder with the drive, dribbles through to the baseline, now back out to Kirby. Hollinger over to Grunder. Ooh. 
Isaiah in the right corner. Isaiah's going to try and drive by the defender. Almost stepped out of bounds, but did a nice job getting it back out to Kirby. Now to Titus. Grunder, the lane open. Goes up, lays nice. it up and in. Good job by Grunder getting to the basket, finishing strong. and got to get back here. Chargers in a hurry. Good. Tipped away by Bryson. Whoa. Isaiah down the lane off the glass. Won't go down. But he will go to the line shooting two. Boy, had a wide open railer and just missed him. Well, and, and Gunder was kind of handling the ball with not a lot of security there. His <laughs> guys are coming around him and there's guys behind him. And I guess I was a little more scared than he was. Timeout taken by Centennial. 46-31. Railers with the lead. 3.49 to go. They're taking time. We'll take it with them and be back in 30 seconds. This is Lincoln, Railer basketball. Back at Roy S. Anderson Gymnasium. Again, our thanks go out to our sponsors, including Connect Construction, Memorial Sports Care at Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital, and the Community Action Partnership of Central Illinois, among the list of businesses around Central Illinois that are sponsoring Railer basketball. Get a chance to stop in one or more. Tell them thanks for helping sponsor all of our broadcasts. 46-31, Railers on top. 3.49 to go. Isaiah at the line, he'll be shooting two. Isaiah leading the way here tonight with 16 for the Railers. First one on the way is not gonna bounce through. Gotta give a shout out to Reese. Could make the opening game tonight. So she's at home with uh, mom. Cooler there, sure. Left them both short. Centennial trying to play a little too fast, had it knocked away in the lane. Yeah, that didn't look that didn't look good from the beginning. And the Railers come away with it. Isaiah's gonna take it strong, contact, and he's gonna go back to the line, shooting two. One thing to get to the line, but we got to make them. Yeah, yeah, you got to put them in. Winthrop 84, the Illini 80 in overtime. Is that a final? Unfortunately, it is, Jeff. Isaiah, first free throw up and there good. Go. Better rotation. Nice high arc shot Bowers has, short on that one. Second one no good, ball tips out to Hemsmanoff. Quickly out to Williams. Williams peels back around. 47-31, Railers up 16, three and a half to go. Ball in the corner, Williams three on the way, that's up and good. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even bother, bother guarding uh, Robert Thomas. As soon as he gets it, he looks the opposite to Did Isaiah get the timeout? Nope. Or did he get the five count? Nope, he did not get the timeout in time. Had trouble getting the ball in bounds. 47-34. a five-second violation to be Centennial Ball. Isaiah didn't get much help no. with people well, coming Well, he, he didn't, but he's also got to run the baseline. After a make, he's got the whole baseline, and he barely moved. And that's that's one of the things you got to do as uh, now Centennial hits a three. So. We've kind of been lackluster, and we've, we've seen this before. 47-37, back down to 10. You said earlier, this one's not over yet. Underneath, Hullinger, back out to Kirby. No one had an easy look, but slipped a little bit and kicked it back out to Bryson. Yeah, gonna run some more clock now. Just 10 point game, 47-37 with 2.40, so Brailers will be in the bonus with the next centennial foul, so we've gotta protect it. And Here's where they're going to start jumping those passing lanes. Two and a half to go. Grunder at the free throw line. Dribbles through back out to Kirby. Tate Sloan. Out to Hollinger. Now to Isaiah. Isaiah's going to drive in a foul. I was going to say, they've been called, you know, I think there was a few times where Centennial was trying to foul the Railers. And the ref uh, didn't give it to him. So we, we got a few more seconds to knock off and then... 
And then that would some send Bowers to the line. What is Bowers tonight, Jeff? He has 17. He's two of six from the line. Two of six, yeah. Guy that handles the ball a lot for the Railers. Got to get better at that. Free throw on the lane. Missed it. No good. 47-37. Score here brings it to single digits. Driving the baseline. Cowper kicks it over to Williams. Williams drives back through. Underneath. Layup won't go down. Fight for the rebound off the glass. That won't go. But it's going to be two shots for Centennial going to the line. It's going to be Roberts Thomas. Foul on Grunder. For Ben, now that's they, his fourth. They get a little closer here. If Roberts Thomas can knock down a couple free throws. First one on the way is good. Well, we talked in the pregame that uh, the last five times these teams have played in this tournament have all been single-digit games, and looks like we might be headed for another one. Yeah, let Isaiah run that baseline a little bit. He doesn't uh, doesn't move very much. 47-39, under two minutes to go. Cannon underneath to Isaiah. Isaiah, guy jumps on his back. And Isaiah's going to go to the line. He's got to make him. You know, I've got two of seven now, I think. Before last uh, free throw, two of six, so two of seven now. And Isaiah's got to put him in. We've got to have those guys at the free throw line. It's only going to be one in bonus because they were saying it wasn't on the shot, saying on the floor. Isaiah at the line. Free throw on the way is good. Forty-eight, thirty-nine. Isaiah now with eighteen. That looks better. Mm, spun off. Forty-eight, thirty-nine. Centennial into the front court with Williams underneath, tipped away by Grunner. Nice job by the junior. Watch your passes. Kirby up to now it's tipped away. Three on the way is up and good. That is a three from Reed. And just like that, we are at 48-42 with a minute 28 to go. A full timeout. A full timeout, but we will keep it here. Minute 28 to go. Railer lead is down to six. And Josh, uh, looking back, uh, the Railers had as much as a 17-point lead at 44-27. It's been a 15-4 run by Centennial. Uh, they're right back in this. I told you at that time I didn't like the body language. You know, it wasn't good. Our, our aggressiveness to the basket stopped. We started to run uh, the stall game up, up way, you know, with a lot, just too much more, too much time left. And uh, we stopped going to the basket. We started stopped being aggressive to the hoop, and we stopped looking to score rather than just knocking uh, time off the clock. And uh, it's come back to haunt us a little bit now. Down, uh, just up six with a minute 28. We got the ball. But again, uh, here comes more full court pressure by, by uh, Centennial. And if uh, the Railers aren't looking to go back door and aren't looking to attack, and if you do get fouled, don't put your free throws in. You know, you're in a, uh, a, a really tough spot here in just a little bit. So here we go. Minute 28 to go. Isaiah looking to inbound. Gets it over to Titus. Titus in the corner. Back to Isaiah. Isaiah with the dribble across the timeline. Now into the front court. They come to Isaiah trying to get away with it. And Isaiah will be going to the line as uh, Centennial was trying to get the foul. And they just weren't going to call it. But it's back to the line for Isaiah. Three of nine tonight. Three of nine, yep. Need him here with 80 seconds left. Isaiah's free throw on the way. Left it way short. But luckily the Railers get the rebound as Titus Cannon tracks it down and a timeout is called by Coach Alexander. 48-42, 1.16 to go. 
Timeout by the Railers. It's just the 30, so we will keep it here. Gives us an opportunity to thank some more of our sponsors, including Denise Costello Salon 416, located at 416 Holly Drive, and also Lincoln Dare, as well as Officer Christy Fruze, and AG Farms. For employment information, call 217-750-1292. Josh, the Railers have uh, struggled at the line tonight. Yeah, well that's uh, you know, and, and that's something that is is hard to correct. You know, I mean, it, you just especially as bad as, as they've been, they've gotten to the line, and that that was our that's been our trouble for years was not even getting there. Uh, we always wanted to get there because we were going to knock them down. So, um, you know, and, and the bad part is it's. Uh, one of our main guys that's going to be there a lot this year, or we hope that he's going to be there a lot this year. Um, it really could have iced this thing away a while ago. Second half free throw shooting for the Railers, Josh. Five of 14. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, as, as good a shooter as Isaiah is, and um, the, the, the situations he's been in before, as Titus misses one now, five of 15. 48-42. Minute 14 left, second one, that one's good. 49-42. Centennial. Well, they're not in any hurry, which is a good thing, so. Almost going away, and then a foul is gonna be whistled on Isaiah. Now you put them at the free throw line. And Isaiah almost had the steal, but we have a good look at the coaching staff, and the coaching staff look was that what are you doing? Yeah. What Why? Are you, what are you doing? Not now. And, and for one thing, it was it was uh, Roberts Thomas at the three-point line. You know, he's not going to shoot it from there and let him catch it and take some more time off because he's he's shown other than that one, which has uh, helped out the Railers, but he's been pretty good from the line so far. So Roberts Thomas helps us out by missing the first. Got a rebound now. 103 left, 49-42. Hits it, make it. 49-43. The thing that we're going to struggle is Isaiah calls timeout. This time uh, getting got, the ball in bounds. Yeah, it's so another timeout taken by the Railers. 102 left. Again, just a 30-second timeout. We will keep it here. And uh, you know, with all the free throws that we know this team shoots, uh, it's certainly. Uh, uh, has been a struggle for the Railers uh, from the line. Yeah, you're right. And, you know, they started out uh, pretty decent, I think, in the first half. But here in the second half, as you said, Jeff, uh, not not good. And, and that's where you've got to – that's where you can separate yourself, uh, you know, not only at home but on the road in a big game. And, and you get a chance to knock a, uh, a good team out, to, you know, as we work ourselves down toward the end of the season, which we're a long way from that. But when you get into conference play, boy – Every uh, every one of those points is very important, especially when you're giving you those what they some call free ones. Um, we haven't been able to connect on them. Well, kickers in the NFL yesterday had a horrible time kicking extra points, so free well, throws contagious here they tonight. They extended that for a reason to make it a little <laughs> more difficult. The the uh, 15 foot here at Roy S has not changed for a long time, so. You know, and that's that's another thing. You're, you're at home. You've been shooting here for not only your career, but uh, leading up to this season here for the last couple weeks, every morning and every afternoon. So um, hopefully Grender can step up. Uh, right now is when we need him even more. One minute even to go. Ben Grunder, the 6'1 junior at the line. Free throw on the way. Free throw good. Yeah. 50-43. Grunder, the dribble, second one on the way. That's good, good as well. By the way, big free throws there by the junior Grunder, and hopefully the Railers here can get a stop. Win a minute. Railers up eight. Roberts Thomas across to Cowper. Cowper back to Williams. Now to Reeves, three from the corner. Back rim, no. Hollinger fighting for the rebound. Rebound comes down to Cowper off the glass. Won't go, but he'll go to the line shooting two. And again. Centennial chance to score with the clock stopped at 44. Yeah, backside rebound. Hollinger did about as much as he could there. He had going against three guys and 
the rest of the guys wearing green were on the other side of the court. So everybody's got a gang rebound here, and that time Hollinger couldn't keep them all off. Free throw good. 51-44. Second one, good as well. We're at 51-45. Isaiah inbounds to Grunder. Grunder turns and looks into the front court. Tipped away into the hands of Centennial. Cowper had to go right through his leg. Josh, you could see it. He was thinking about shooting yeah. before catching. He was ready to fire and uh, didn't have the ball yet. A costly turnover for Centennial. Get it into Grunder. Grunder looks ahead to Kirby. We're at 32 seconds. Bryson back to Cannon. Tried to get it over to Grunder. Luckily tipped over to Kirby. And Bryson will go to the line out shooting too as he's fouled by Reed. Yeah, and, and Cannon tried to throw basically a pass from half court all the way underneath the basket and as desperate right now as the Chargers are where they're running everywhere. Just a lot of uh, a lot of ground for that ball to cover. And uh, they were able to get a uh, good time. Grunder actually did a good job of meeting the pass. Didn't catch it, but uh, tipped it over to Kirby and then Kirby got fouled as Kirby misses the first free throw. So you bet the Raiders will be in at the free throw stripe tomorrow morning. Bryson with nine, trying to reach double figures. Does with that one. 52, 45, 25 seconds. Into the front court, Roberts Thomas. Hemsmana, three on the way. Front of the rim, no. Grunder the rebound for the Railers. Kirby and Bryson gets fouled. And Bryson will go to the line shooting two more. And maybe, just maybe, with a seven point lead and Bryson at the line and only 11.7 to go, we might be able to start taking that sigh of relief. Yeah, yeah, and then, uh, the Railers took some relief too early in the game, uh, too early in the fourth quarter. But they were able to hang on. Normally when you don't shoot free throws very well or as bad as this was tonight, you don't uh, all the time come out victorious. But the Railers look like they are tonight. Got 12 of 22, is that what? Uh, let's see. I, I got so many misses. Yeah, and <laughs> too, way too more, way too many than makes, I know that. Two big ones here. Bryson free throw on the way. No good. And the scary thing is the Railers have only one field goal this quarter. Everything else has been from the line, and they've left so much there tonight. Right. Bryson gets the second one. 53-45. Under seven. Williams. Cowper three on the way, won't go down. Good. Rebound comes to Hollinger, and that's the way this one will end as the Raiders come away with the victory on opening night, 53-45. Raiders start the season at 1-0, Centennial at 0-1. Final score, Lincoln 53, Centennial 45. We'll be back with the Josh Tomnick Growl Incorporated and Schneider Chiropractic Center postgame show in a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball. They just play a role, and, uh, you know, there might be a night when one of them has a, a really big, big, big game, and uh, but that's what our team is about, and, you know, we're going to work to get better and do what we have to do and, uh, you know, find the roles that each individual has to play. Coach, uh, you talked about uh, uh, the team as a whole. You talked about uh, having, you know, getting that game underway. And it, it doesn't probably take long, you know, with all the games during the summer and then practice rolls around. I'm sure you probably get a good sense early that they're, they're probably tired of seeing each other and then they want to compete. They want to do something where there's going to be a win or a loss at the end. And uh, tonight you were able to get that win. Yeah, I was uh, surprised because we have not practiced well uh, we, we we well you saw the way we about the last eight minutes is how we've been practicing so uh, you know but uh, you know again it's the first game of the year and you don't want to be playing at the peak of your your schedule and at the best that you can at this point so we'll uh, we'll take the win we got a lot of things to work on and get better and they can see what they have to work on and uh, you know that'll make them better as well 
Coach, before we let you go, a couple concerns of you for this year. Um, you, what, what are the Railers going to have to do to compete every night? It looks like uh, once you lose Bacon, boy, we really get small. Uh, you know, uh, six five Bacon, but then you basically the guys that we're in tonight may not be the game, guys that are in all season, but. You know, Bowers six one, Grunder six one. Uh, although they've put a little be uh, meat all, on, but we're all six one. Well, that's what I'm looking at here. I was oh. like, uh, "Where's the where's the little height at?" But <laughs> what a couple concerns that concern you that the season as we roll into a Central State eight play and further on. Oh, it does. But you know, I've been doing it for a lot of years where we've been pretty short. So we'll do with what we got, and we're going to play and play hard and execute and uh, you know get better. So. It's really, uh, you know, I, I'm happy with our team. You know, Drew, you know, hopefully our our sophomore, uh, Jermaine Hamlin, when he, uh, he gets some time. You know, he's only been playing for a year and a half. Uh, you know, he's about 6'9 right now. So mm -hmm. he'll give us a little bit of size if we can find a, the right spots to use him in. But, you know, we'll just have to use. We just got to be mean. So we'll, we'll, we'll move on. All right, Coach. Well, congratulations on the win tonight. And we'll see you back here Wednesday night at uh, 7.30 as the Railers play host to Cahokia. We'll be here. All right. <laughs> Railers with the win here tonight, 53-45. We'll be back to wrap it up in a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball. Lincoln Regular Basketball on WLCN 96.3 and streaming live at WLCNonline.com is brought to you by Shelter Insurance Agent Corey Leonard, AAA Window Siding and Doors, The Carpet House, Lincoln Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Lincoln IGA, Fifth Street Food Mart, Timbercrest Veterinary Service, The Lincoln Park District, Rick Ham State Farm Insurance, Lincoln Heating and Cooling, Lincoln Printers, Memorial Sports Care at Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital, Lincoln College, Stacy's Family Pharmacy, Community Action Partnership of Central Illinois, Grau Incorporated, Schneider Chiropractic, St. Clara's Manor, Eaton Corporation, Jim Examus Ford Lincoln, Bright Ideas Screen Printing and Embroidery, Headline Salon LLC, Citizens to elect Kevin Bateman for Lincoln Mayor, Family Custom Cleaners, Laundry, Tanning and U-Haul, Denise Costello Salon at 416 Holly Drive. Gary's Drywall, Finishing, Painting and Power Washing. Connect Construction. Lincoln Dare. AG Farms. And by Stuff to Rhea Pizza. 